Hi, it's Tansel here, and today I'm going to show you how to use a very basic memory technique. It's called the Memory Palace. Uh, you would have seen some videos on my YouTube channel, uh, but I'm going to show you the very basics of it and how you can train. Uh, and we're just going to use uh, words in this example. We're not going to chuck in a whole bunch of numbers or random data. This is just the very basic. So let's get started. So what a memory palace is, if you haven't watched uh, any of my videos, it's like a holding spot for information, right? So let's say these are like folders on a computer, right? And you can have hundreds of those, right? So what you do is the information goes into these folders, right? Like so. Uh, and you can have not just one and two things, but you can have multiple things going in there. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that we know what these folders are and we know the order of these folders. So that's what a memory palace is. It's essentially a set of folders, or in this case, locations um, that are in sequence so that when we do go to recall, we can recall back in a sequence. Right, so remembering in order. So if you remember random stuff, uh, that's a different strategy altogether. We've got information going in there, and then in order to recall, we go into these locations, into these folders, and extract. Just like a computer, right? You don't memorize every single file on your computer. You sort of understand where the folder is, don't you? And then once you understand where the folder is, you go, oh yeah, that you know, photo was in there, that document was in there, and so on, right? Yes, you can do a search, on your computer and find it that way but you know this way here is how we're utilizing it for our brain at the moment so generally if we want to memorize a bunch of words what we can do is we can put a word into one of these locations right so this is location one that's location two location three location four and you can keep going Right, you can have hundreds of locations. I, I generally start people off with about 20 locations so they can get a feel for how the memory palace works. Uh, so I'll just give you a brief overview of this at the moment. What are these locations? Right, The most popular memory palace uh, locations around is your own home because you know it so well. Right, So what you can do is you can start off at say the front of your house and work your way in in a sequence, so in a linear process. So what does that mean? Don't just go into your house all random willy-nilly. That will make the recalling very difficult, right? So what you want to be able to do is, say, so go to the front of your house. So I'll give you an example of my house, right? The front of my house, I've got a fence, right? So I'll put a big F there, a fence. And from my fence, I've got a front door. So I'll put a D there. And then when I open my door, I've got a few things. I've got a living area, I've got a bedroom. Let's say I go into the bedroom. Now, I don't write bedroom in here because that's, again, that's a whole room. I want to be able to take one item in that room. So that it, it's confusing because the location seems like, oh yeah, it's a scene, bedroom's a location. But think of it this way. We're going to be recalling from an item, not necessarily a location. Here, I go into a bedroom and I might say bed, right? That's a physical bed. So I've picked an item and that's going to be my location. Right? And the final one, um, next to the bed, I might have a window. Right? Uh, and they're my four locations. Now, if I want to memorize words on there, all I have to do is make a story with the word and the first location. And then word, second location, word, third, and then the fourth. For example, let's say, <laughs> I'm just totally making this up. We're going to memorize the word clown. A clown and my front fence. So imagine, Right, a clown was driving into my fence with his weird car, pops out and starts dancing on top of my fence. Right now, I've got you visualizing what my fence looks like, right? <laughs> so this is a memory technique for you as well. So I've got a clown dancing on my front fence. Right, then the next word comes along, right? Uh, and it's gonna connect into my door. So I will say maybe it's a phone, right? Because we all have phones these days. So phone and door. So Let's make it easy. I threw my door, uh, I threw my phone at the front door, right? And it just broke everywhere. Yeah, smashed. If I visualize silly stories like that, if I visualize something that's a bit out there, it's going to be a lot easier to recall. That's doing one word per location, and all you have to do is just go back to your fence, go back to the door, and say, what was happening there? Oh, the phone broke, right? What was happening at the fence? Oh, there was a clown. So that's using one word. Now what I like to do 
is I like to start people off with two words per location, right? So let's say this is a pen and this uh, next word, I'm gonna have to pick something, is a bag. Right? Because I was just staring at my bag just now. <laughs> so pen and bag. Now what you can do is say, okay, a pen, right? Someone was running on my fun fence with a pen. Right, so what I do, I threw my bag at them. <laughs> so stop running on my front fence. Right, so I threw my bag. So you see now, it's become more of a story. The more words you add on there, the more narrative you build into it. Let's take the door. Now I have a chair. Tell I'm very creative this morning with the office furniture. <laughs> and TV, right, so my door. Right? I can keep throwing things out the door, but let's just be a bit more creative, right? Maybe uh, I took down my door and I folded it into a chair. Right now, people are going, well, what the hell? Yeah, can you... Well, in your mind, you could do whatever you want. That's the beauty of memory techniques. You, you can be highly creative. Instead of saying, oh yeah, I sat down with the chair next to the door, that's kind of boring, right? So I went to the door, I folded it, I made it into a chair, I sat down, and then I started watching TV. Uh, or I was holding the TV while I was sitting down and watching it. Now that's a bit more compelling because I could sit down and watch TV, but it's just a boring static image. Right? What you want is you want something that's engaging and me holding a TV, imagine how heavy a TV could be, maybe it's super heavy, but I'm really strong, right? <laughs> so I can hold that. So there you go, we, we've created a little narrative and if you do two, 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 and you've got 10 locations, well that's 20 words. Isn't it? That's the very basics. I, I don't want to go through any more. Yes, you can do three words, four words, five words, ten words. But at the moment, what I would like you to do as a challenge is see if you can create 20 locations around your house and then just get some random words and pop them in your locations and see how you go. Now, where do you get the random words? You can go to my website, tanslali.com forward slash downloads, and you can actually get the, some random words for you as well. Some easy ones, some hard ones. I'll put the link down below, hopefully in the, in the comments or description somewhere there. So you can download and play around as well. But for now, think about how you're gonna create your locations and also have a play around with this because the best way to do it is to just create stories as you move along. And the more you create these stories, the faster and better you will get at memorizing as well. So give that a go. I'll create another video on more advanced methods to train as well. But for now, if you want to start off with memory, start off with training, give that a crack. Cheers.